Today's video is sponsored by Dorman Vale, the Sleeping Valley. Dorman Vale is an exciting new fantasy world setting and living world, in the making, for 5e D&D, which is just launched on Kickstarter. Discover new otherworldly player races, monsters, magic items, classes, extensive character customization, and an entire weapon system rework. Use weapons based on their style, not just their damage. Finally, in Dormant Vale, players will get the chance to experience a magic textile world filled with eldritch horrors, celestial strife, and political turmoil. But what I'm most excited about is that this book will act as the core rules and lore for the lofty goal of creating a persistent online living world, similar to Adventure League, where players' actions truly alter the world as a whole, not just the campaign they're playing in. Discord servers that serve as an MMO slash RPG hub, complete with shops, quests, taverns, and more. I can't wait. Over 200 pages of content, beautiful art, a chilling adventure for first to fifth level characters, and cleverly thought out adaptations to the 5e system so many of us love. Dorman Vale is going to be a hit. Check out the Kickstarter in the description below. Now what you're here for. When Eric the Indestructible Dwarf broke the game in the funniest way possible. Hi everyone, All Things D&D is back with another story. Finding a good game can be a challenge. Finding a DM test running their own game system and you breaking it in a fun way? Once in a lifetime. Being cooped up at home due to the thing, I've opted to indulge myself in something I always wanted to try, but never had the time nor the company for. TTRPGs. Found a posting on r slash LFG for a one-shot using a homebrewed system of the GM zone making that he was keen to play test. Sure, why not? Being a fan of board games in general, I enjoy some luscious crunch. I write the GM. He shares a Google Doc containing a rule set spanning some 40 pages. The world and the system look interesting and coherent, and so I dig in, trying to make sense of it all. On further inspection, I seem to find some balance issues in the system. Well, since it's a playtest, I decide that I want to stress test the said system and try to min-max my character with the intention to see if I can break the whole thing. The GM reluctantly, I understand, it's his baby after all, gives me the go-ahead to do so, and I proceed with character creation. First, I pick the name. In this case, a rose by any other name might well smell just as sweet, but it wouldn't be nearly as silly as what I envisioned. The system sees each character have seven primary attributes, endurance, agility, strength, charm, intuition, discipline, and reason. Just like Fallout's system is called special, referencing its main stats, I start wondering if an equally cool acronym is possible with the stat names we got in this homebrew. Best I managed to come up with is Sad Eric. And this is how Eric the Sad came to be. Eric is a dwarf. In this setting, dwarves are born of stone. Think kindergarten gems from Steven Universe, while being somewhat similar to Warforge crunch-wise. A racial ability to poop bricks and throw them at enemies is optional. Since dwarves are born as is, facial features, beard and all, I explain that Eric isn't actually particularly sad. It's just his face is basically that of Grumpy Cat of meme fame, which explains why the nickname stuck. Not being the sharpest dwarf in the shed, Eric confusingly claims that he's born of sadstone, which is a type of sedimentary rock. Suh. Eating habits of dwarfs are also strange, with them drinking 80% spirits, paint thinner, and other questionable liquids, as though it was beer, since normal beer doesn't do anything for them. What they require for actual sustenance is a mystery to all, save the dwarves themselves. I look over the skills and decide to build a frontliner slash tank, Eric is min-maxed to have endurance at 6 and some strength at 4. All the other stats range from 0 to 2. Endurance plus level equals HP. Endurance plus agility equals defense. All checks including attack rolls are made with a D6 plus a corresponding attribute score. Attack roll is tested against the defense score. No crits. Eric is under-equipped since I roll a 1 for starting gold, but nevertheless his defense, modified by a measly padded cloth and a light shield, is 12. A deliberately min-maxed PC, with a focus on strength for attack, and can get a maximum of 6 strength. Long story short, nothing during this session could touch Eric even hypothetically. But I didn't know that until after the end of the game, which definitely saved a fair amount of orc villages from total annihilation. Since the character's background also gives an attribute boost, I pick the only one that doesn't have a penalty to any physical stats. There's also a stamina system, but that's irrelevant. Eric is a sailor. Well, he used to be one. Eric worked as a galley dwarf until recently, but got into an altercation with his fellow crew members, who wanted to use Eric instead of an anchor. It's very possible that the previous anchor was consumed by Eric himself. The crew kicked Eric off the ship in the first port they docked at. 
Upset by this, Eric stumbles from tavern to tavern, trying to find a drink strong enough to drown his sorrows in. Okay, other PCs are introduced. Wonderful, thought-out characters with motives, morals, aspirations, and intricate backstories that tie into the setting's world-building and its history. I mean it. One of the players made a stunning portrait of their character. I really mean it. The PCs find themselves in a small town during a snowstorm. They start interacting with the townsfolk and each other. One happens by chance upon this world's version of the lusty Argonian maid, belonging to the mayor, and then blackmails said mayor into letting them peruse his library at their leisure. Another sings beautifully to the townsfolk, who despite the snowstorm are getting ready to celebrate the winter solstice. The third goes around town casually fishing for any valuable information they could later use themselves or sell to interested parties. Eric doesn't care. Eric is sitting at the largest centermost table in the tavern, despite not having a single copper piece to his name. Sighs periodically and generally ignores everything that's happening around him. Okay, then plot-related things start happening. There's a commotion in the central square. All the townsfolk gather outside to try and learn what's transpired, alarmed by the severity of the unfolding situation. Eric finishes his beer, calls out for some more. Not getting a top-up, raises his head and sees that there's no one left in the tavern anymore. He gets up and starts methodically going from table to table, consuming any and all liquids that he comes upon. Having drunk the tavern dry, he finally exits the building, only to meet the aforementioned gathering of people. In the crowd, there are your usual calls to action and pleas for help. Eric is the first PC to respond, obliviously interjected, really, saying sullenly, Fine, I'll save your lumber, what's it's, but only as long as I get paid. Other PCs also offer to help, and so the party is formed. Onward to glory and adventure. And having left the town, the group almost immediately chances upon a random encounter. A large 10-foot snake slithers from some hole in the ground and tries to bite one of the adventurers. But they're nimble enough to dodge the attack. The GM rubs his hands in anticipation. It's the first encounter of the game and of the rule system that he worked so hard on. A giant snake is blocking your path, swaying aggressively. What do you want to do? Before anybody has even a chance to make a suggestion or start considering the options that the party has, Eric sighs, walks up to the snake grabs it by the tail, and proceeds to calmly and steadily drag it off the road. The snake lunges at him, auto miss. Its max modified attack roll is 10, Eric's defense is at 12. Once the danger noodle is in the ditch, Eric turns to face it, looks it in the eyes, points a finger at it and says very sternly, sit, succeeding a charm check against all odds. The serpent just stares at him shocked, struggling to process the situation. The party moves on. Our intrepid adventurers arrive at a recently abandoned orc campsite, they ponder what to do next. Eric is disinterested in the discussion and tired. He sighs, drops face upon the snow, and starts moving his stubby arms and legs up and down, making ugly little snow angels. After some deliberation, the party decides to rest at the campsite. We determine who stands watch when and go to sleep. Dwarves don't sleep. They need to maintain a period of inactivity again, much like Warforged. Dwarves also don't feel cold. Eric burrows himself completely into the snow. When it's his turn to stand watch, Eric sits up so that only his head is popping out from the snow, like a periscope, and proceeds to monitor the area. Eventually, he notices a massive orc walking towards their camp. It's so big, heavy, and savagely bestial that it's moving on its knuckles like a gorilla. Eric climbs out of his burrow, shakes himself off, as though a wet dog, and grumbles shouts out to his party members, Wake up, you lumber butts! And the combat begins. Eric casually walks up to the hulking tower of flesh and muscle three times his size in orc form and hits it with a short sword three times. Characters get three actions per turn. Modified roll of seven, three times in a row. Jackpot. The orc is minced meat. The rest of the party take their turns. The orc struggles a bit unsuccessfully, and Eric finishes it off. Drags the orc off the road, as is Eric's habit, and goes back to his slumber. Come morning as the party's breaking their fast, Eric approaches the dead orc and nibbles on one of its tusks. Meh, he's had better. After this, I've decided to actively desist from hogging the spotlight despite it happening against my intention, and let my fellow players do their proper role-playing and use their character's skills and whatnot. Eric is just so stupidly fun to observe and make situations around, maybe because he's actually invincible. One punch man but depressed and with zero drive and motivation? Yeah, sounds about right. During one of the last few lengthy discussions between other players, who are deciding whether to go and save the lumberjacks or try to scout out another orc camp along the way, Eric sits down on the ground and starts poking his fingers into the mud. He fishes out bugs and worms, carefully inspecting each with great interest, giving every single one wonderful names, and then proceeds to eat them. It sounds like the DM system could use some tweaking, but hey, that's what experimentation is for. 
Have you ever run a custom game that someone ruined for better or for worse? Well, don't be a lumber butt. Share and tell us what you thought about this story. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, All Things D&D. Our next video will be posted in three days, so stay tuned for more amazing Dungeons & Dragons content.